Um, that's that's what's said to us. Um, you mentioned the point, or you asked the question, just in relation to flexibility around accessing hotel accommodation, where it's deemed and assessed by the local authority that there is no other alternative. That flexibility is there. I'd make the following point, though. We often have scenarios, literally every day, where we might contact a hotel and they say, don't do business with you, we're full. And yet a household might con may contact themselves and they may get through, and vice versa happens. So just keep in mind the extent we have 790 families in emergency um, situations, um, of which 580 are in commercial hotel settings. We make the point all the time. We're not, we're not hiding behind the door here. This isn't sustainable, which is why we have to be looking at the um, fast track build um, to get away from that. Um, and we think that um, this is not just sustainable for the families. And you know, there will be a reckoning down the line in terms of the impact on children and families. We know well um, that children are massively discommoded. We try and work on a case by case basis when it's brought to our attention. The sheer scale of the volume that's coming at us makes it extremely difficult. I'm not making excuses for it. Of course, mistakes are made, and we'll admit them when they're made. And if we can resolve the issue, we will actually try to resolve the issue. But the, to directly answer your question, if it's brought to our attention that, look, this is just too far for us, we need to make a change, we'll do as much as we can to try and facilitate the family to do that. Just th th thank so you. May I just make one other point in Briefly. relation to that? Yeah. Briefly. We operate this system based on a, a credit card system and I have to tell you it's an extremely difficult thing to do uh, within the, the rules if you like uh, and so in, uh, just to make the point that if it's a case of a family getting housed or keeping within the rules the family gets housed. I, if you could just bear with me for one moment I want to clarify for a number of figures that were put out today so it's just that we have complete uh, clarity. At the start of the meeting uh, I think it was yourself, maybe uh, Mr. Brady, uh, mentioned there were 22,000, there was planning permission granted for 22,000 housing units in the Greater Dublin area. Is that correct? Uh, 22,611, if you want to be exact. In the Greater Dublin area. In the Greater Dublin area. Are they all private or public or both? Uh, they are all uh, planning permissions. They're all units for which planning <coughs> permission uh, uh, have been granted but not commenced, so they're private. They're all private. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, do you have a number for uh, local authorities where they have gone through planning, the planning process for their own developments? I don't. I don't I'm not. Okay. Could you supply that I to the committee, it, please? Could. Um, One other, just bear with me, these are just the, the couple of numbers for clarity. Um, you mentioned the targets uh, set out by the government were 75,000 units of accommodation to be delivered across the various schemes by 2020. Is that correct? The, the, that's, in, that's contained within the, uh, the government strategy, uh, social housing strategy, and it talks about 35,000 units to be delivered by the uh, uh, construction by the, a, by, by the AHBs and by the... Uh, to local authorities and 75,000 units to be delivered using revenue uh, type street leasing type models. 75,000 are from the private sector and others. They're going to be leased, the housing, the HAPs or Set whatever. 35,000 35, 35, to, to be constructed. Okay. I suppose no, what I. No, to be acquired. What I'm trying to get is acquired, acquired, leased, yes. rather. But, but the point, the figure, yeah. No, let's let's go back on the seventy-five thousand. I want I want just seventy-five thousand is half. The thirty-five thousand is everything else, including RAS and long-term leasing. Yeah, you just might explain that again because we need clarity. Yes, please. Uh, the thirty-five thousand is additional social housing units avail uh, to make available additional thirty-five thousand social housing units by way of acquisition, leasing, renting, or RAS. Okay. So it's it's, it's an, an additional. 35 units added to the stock of social housing between AHBs and ourselves. Are any of those construction? Yes. How many? I don't know that figure. There's about 14,000. Yeah, it's in, it, all of this is contained, Chairman, in the social housing I, 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 The point I'm getting at is I'm not disputing any of this, right? We we'll get you what, the exact figures. What we'll I'm the exact and if you, if you take it with the previous question I asked, which was the, the part eights that have been completed, that we as a committee can try and see the timeline 
and the Deputy O'Brien spent quite a bit of time earlier on following the process of delivery. So we're looking at where the Part 8 plannings are in relation to the programme you're trying to deliver. We need to marry those pieces to get... get you know where I'm coming from, I do. Exactly. It's, I do. It's to marry that, that complete... Yeah. We'll complete. get more information for you on that, chair. Thank you. Look, we have concluded on time, but if there's anybody who wants to ask for additional information that can be forwarded to the committee, I'll afford them an opportunity now. But will you please keep it as questions rather than statements as we are going to conclude? Uh, I'll start here and work, work around the table. It's directed at, but directly specific questions or additional information you would like to have. Okay, Deputy Kenny. Probably going back on the initial questions I asked about uh, nationally, do we know how many voids are there now? in each county, is that information available if it is, can it be sent to the committee? And is there a cost put on the refurbishment of them, right? And the only other question or, or comment I want to make is that when we went through the procurement process on any type of building project and we went through the approval process, I fail to understand why you're happy enough that the threshold is only 2 million, which will deliver you 15 units, where if you want to deliver 30 units, you're back to the process of four uh, um, approvals from the department each time. My understanding is that the department don't have the resources to deal with the volume that's coming in and it's causing massive delays. And I'm wondering, I think it probably adds about, you're wondering how long it takes to deliver something. I think it adds about six months onto the process at a minimum. And I'm wondering why you're saying it's adequate at two million when I think it should be definitely uh, five million. Maybe response well, to that. Respond to that by means of correspondence. Uh, Deputy O'Sullivan. Yeah. Um, just going back to, and I know you have the figures on the need for whether it's one bed, two bed or three bed, but we know that the one bed accommodation is the problem. It would be good to see the actual demand in each of those categories and how they're, they're being matched up with the supply that is coming on stream. The national figure you No, wish. Dublin, I'm sorry, I'm only interested in Dublin. Dublin has the longest list, very sorry. But <laughs> those, <laughs> figures, those figures are published every quarter, and the last yeah. quarter was published within the last week or so. But so. is there a problem with one-bed accommodation? Are we building enough one-beds? That's what I'm getting at, because I think single men have a really particular problem. Second one is um, as potential for an organisation like Housing for Humanity, who takes over, sorry, Habitat for Housing, who take over the buildings and there's a system with people want to buy, is there scope for that? And my third one is the difficulties in getting on the RAS scheme. Are, we, are you looking at that? Deputy Butler. Um, yeah, work. Eugene, I think I, yeah, I asked the question, maybe you answered it, about did you consider moving people with the most need from Dublin down the country? Did you answer that? Yeah, I'm it now, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> Deputy, uh, uh, Deputy Brazel. Uh, ju just in, re in relation to um, the uh, voids um, and, and the point you made about um, there's uh, not everybody that's on the housing list wants to be housed, wants a social house. I think that's a very important figure because the is it possible to get a figure on that amount of, on that, um, or, 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 or would, I, I'm, I'm asking the question and I'm answering it in my head and I realise that it's not, but, yeah, but it, 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 you know, when we talk about the housing need and the housing demand, the figures are distorted and it's, it's hard to work from them then to get the solutions. Uh, I think we need to put a bit of thought into that because if we're if we're trying to solve a problem around figures that are in in fact not accurate, then we're going around in circles in, in, to some so, some extent. So I think all of us need to put a bit of thought into that one, Thank um, you. and we might come up with better solutions. Then. Thank you, Deputy Deputy O'Brien. Yeah, so the questions are. Can the faster procurement process that was used for Poppentry be used for Part 8 once the Part 8 are in place? So it's not a question about the planning, it's about the, the procurement. Is there a limit on the amount a local authority can apply for for a refurb of an individual building? If so, what is it? And are there many units that would cost more to refurb? On acquisitions, a couple of us asked this and the question wasn't answered. Of your allocation, uh, for example, for the next three years, is there a maximum amount of that allocation you can use for acquisitions of, of turnkey-ready properties? 
Uh, and the second part of that is, is can CPOs be used? Uh, one new question, both South Dublin County Council and Dublin City Council have targets under the strategy. It's 3347 units for DCC and 1445 units for SDCC. Can you let us know uh, after the first year of this strategy what percentage of those targets you've met so far? Um, uh, and one other thing, and maybe you can send this by email or if you're not comfortable emailing it, you can ring people individually. I'd really like to know what one thing you think could change policy-wise, legislation-wise, process-wise, that would make it easier for you guys to do the job of stopping people becoming homeless or supplying more houses. And if you think you can answer that in whatever way is appropriate, let us know, because that's what we're looking for. Deputy Coppinger. Yeah, three quick questions. Um, could the uh, association supply us with an audit of all local authority owned land in each local authority, the, the acreage, the zoning and the location? Because that's absolutely critical to have at the end of this committee, because the manager says that there is enough land to build houses, so there isn't in some locations though, that's an issue. But um, I think we absolutely need that information. The second question is um, why the local authorities haven't developed a scheme for buying second-hand properties where there are residents in situ. This is going to be very important for the vulture fund and distressed property situations. And there was an article in The Independent last week about this which said apparently Dublin City Council could have bought a block of apartments, but because there was some... Just to the questions. Yes, yeah, sorry, but this is a... Yeah. There was some tenants living in it, so it didn't buy it. Yeah. All right, and that, that could have been a great mixed tenure type of development. Um, so the development of a, like a mortgage, affordable mortgage scheme in situ with people who were renting, not to make them evicted. This is critical for the likes of Tyrrell's Town, for example. Um, and the third question is in relation to NAMA. It's constantly brought up that the local authorities turn down loads of NAMA properties. And if you could supply us with an answer about why that was, what was unsuitable about them or whatever, so we can then have that as part of our... Thank you, Deputy Coppinger. Deputy Fergus O'Dell. I just asked that. I welcome the, the time they've given us. Just a question. The first one is about the... Uh, the, the way the homeless.org, I think I know what the website is, because I live in a different county. Uh, could you give, I'm very interested in your social and family supports that you spoke about, how you work with families, because I think that's a hugely positive engagement, I think, uh, and how you fund that, uh, please. The second one is that, in, go back to my best practice question, I acknowledge the interpretation you gave me, but could I ask, um, there must be sort of cities in London, or sorry, in England, excuse me, that have tackled a huge housing crisis and, you know, what, what, what's the best practice over there? Again, it's one for people that know the trade, because I don't. I know, there must be new and other initiatives. There used to be a Brighton housing conference years ago. I don't know if anybody here remembers it. But uh, I, I went to once or twice and there was very good ideas being brought forward by city governments, uh, administration in particular. I think really that's, that, that's it. And the last point, sorry, can we visit these uh, modular housing? Because, uh, again, I don't know where, where they are. We've like them. No, I haven't, uh, thank you. But we can arrange, we'll arrange that no, but separately. Just for where we can, no, I, I live in County Lyle, I haven't seen them, I'm sorry. But I would love to see we them. We can so arrange that for individuals who haven't seen them. Yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, colleagues, yeah. thank, thank sorry, you for the... Sorry, for, just, oh, sorry. Just leading on from the question I asked about the homeless list and the seven, 790 families, um, could you have you any idea about the the bigger list, the housing list, how many family units you're talking about, and including that single people as well. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the bigger homeless list, or the biggest house, the bigger housing list in the, in, across the country. Right. Yeah, a break the national, the national yeah. figures. Right? Yeah, would you have an idea of how many family, you know, family units would be involved in that, including single people? Thanks. Deputy, thank you. Colleagues, thank you for the extensive range of questions this afternoon. Uh, I'd like to, to, to thank uh, the members of the County and City Management Association this afternoon, Mr Eugene Cummins, Mr Dick Brady, Mr Carl Morgan, Mr Billy Coleman. Um,
Certainly, your contribution was very worthwhile and very informative. And the questions that we asked, we look forward to those responses. And please be assured that it's not being taken in isolation. It's very difficult, I know, for you sitting here today. But other sectors and relevant are all being brought through it. And we're trying to marry a report together based on uh, the advice, the information, and the answers that are being given from a whole range of sectors. I really appreciate your attendance and participation this afternoon. Thank you very can much. I, can, I, can I just, on behalf of the forums, can I thank you very much and all of the members uh, for the opportunity to present here today and uh, to give any assistance we can. And we'll be more than pleased to pass, bring back more information and indeed to come here again if, if required to do so. We're all in it together, really. And, uh, to thank you for your attention and uh, it was beneficial to us as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This meeting is now adjourned until the 28th of April at 10.30am. Thank you. <laughs>